So what I want to do now is to go over what the impasse or uh, the, the deadlock that's in Raleigh right now, what that effect that's having on our school system. Now let me take you back to about a year ago when we were talking about some of these issues in, in an informative way and remind you that we basically have three primary buckets of allotment that come to us from the different funding sources. One is state, and right now about 62% of our funding for Swain County Schools is coming from different state pockets. Now within this, understand that there are all kinds of allotments that are given to us and they are designated for particular things to happen in the school. From the federal government right now, we are receiving about 25% of our funding, but that is a little bit deceptive because 10% of that is in a funding source that is designed to make up for the fact that in Swain County, we have a tremendous amount of land that we can't tax. So in lieu of the ability to tax that land, for example, the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, or perhaps uh, the Native American Reservation, those pieces, they give to us some impact funding because our inability to tax those impacts what we're able to do as a school system. About 10% of all of our federal money is coming out of impact. And then that is combined with our local allotment that includes grants, the county appropriation, and also that impact. So about 10% of our total budget is impact money. About 10% of that is grant money, and about 3% of our local funding comes from the county. Now, of that, only two of those have a maximum amount of flexibility, because when you get a grant, you write a grant for a particular purpose, and the money has to be used for that. Now, if you look at all of these numbers, and you remember that about 15% of the budget outside of impact comes from the federal government, you see that that adds up to 100% of the funding for Swain County Schools. Now with all of those numbers in place as kind of a base to start from, what impact is the state issue creating for us? The biggest piece is there is almost no increase in any area that we are sensing or feeling in uh, our ability to create better programs or make things grow for our students. Now there are a couple of set exceptions. We were able to receive funding for one art teacher and that's really important because we were able to place a full-time art teacher at the elementary schools and that opened up the opportunity for scheduling changes for somewhere around 1,400 students. So this one position added to our school system has affected that number of students. Uh, the other place that we have found an increase is we are able to add one mental health support person. Um, we have not hired someone in that position yet because this money did not come available to us until just recently. We're halfway through the year and I want to tell you that it is difficult to find people working in the mental health field right now who are willing to be funded or paid at the level that a school system can do that when they can go into private practice somewhere and, and obviously probably make a great deal more money. Now what that means is uh, there has been no adjustment to most of our teachers, not all, but most of our teachers' salary because some were given a step on their pay scale. We have a, a pay scale for teachers working one year, two year, three year, all the way up through about 30. Some received a step on that, but there are some that did not. Um, well, our principals were given an increase this year. and. There were some significant 
a significant number of employees that didn't receive any increase. And we call those our, our non-certified staff. And they include our custodians, our teacher assistants, our maintenance employees. They're the ones that make sure that the buildings are working and everything is in good shape. And also our uh, cafeteria workers and our bus drivers. This group has seen absolutely no increase in their salary. And that piece, the fact that our teachers really didn't receive a raise and our custodians and this staff didn't receive a raise is one of the pieces that has kept the legislature from being able to agree with the governor. In almost every other place we're operating in a large capacity like we were in the previous school year. Now what they did, the state did give to us um, is an increase in funding for benefits so that as we are paying for health insurance and also as retirement, we're able to meet those needs. But I, I want you to understand also that all of our staff are not paid through state funds. And so whenever there's an increase in health benefits and retirements, a lot of times we have to reach over into our local funding in order to meet that obligation. So in essence, what does that mean? We're being asked to do more with less in a lot of ways. And it's stretching our ability to meet all of the needs of our students. But I want you to know I'm very proud of what we do in Swain County because if you take the per, per pupil expenditure, that means this, the, the number, the amount of funding that we put into the education of every single student in Swain County, we are at the state average or above it in almost every single area. That's because our focus is on the students and we are working very hard to make sure that all of the money including all of our local money that comes out of your tax dollars locally, that that money goes to the students and is used very, wide, very wisely. Now, if you have any further questions about any of this, I want you to please feel free to contact me. And I promise you this, this is one of the most complicated things that I get to deal with as superintendent. And I am certain that I was, as I was talking to you about it, your eyes were probably starting to glaze over in some ways. And I understand that. I really do. But if I don't have the answer, I've got somebody in the office next to me that does have the answer. So all you have to do is give us a call or send me an email, and I will do my very best to be totally transparent with you about these numbers. Now that includes one more point that I want to make. If you go by the high school, you see a lot of construction. If we are so tight with money and we're asked, being asked to do more with less in some ways, where is that money coming from? It's coming from this word right here. That high school renovation is happening because we received a grant through the Department of Public Instruction last year and that, it, that money is working in conjunction with some extra support from our county commissioners so that we're able to do that renovation. This money for construction is not coming from any of these sources anywhere. This is totally extra. And whenever that renovation is over, that money will be totally gone, 100% used because we know that our students need more space and they need the opportunity to have a more inviting environment at the high school. So please understand, just because there's construction doesn't mean that there's extra money laying around. There's not. As a matter of fact, we spend most of our money in our school system into direct support for the students. So with all of that said, please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to contact me. Um, you can use our Ask Mark at swainmail.org. We would love to speak to you that way, or you can call me at 488-3129. My extension is 5135, and I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. Um, we are here to help you, and we are here to take care of your students in Swain County. So until the next time, God bless you, and thank you for being part of our team.